Jamie Spears has reportedly just filed a petition to end Britney's conservatorship, but while her lawyer is calling it a legal victory, he is still concerned that Jamie is trying to avoid any accountability. Previously, Britney wanted Jamie charged for what he did to her throughout this conservatorship, so while we talk about the good news, let's take it all with a grain of salt. But first, if you could do us a big favor and please tap that like button, we'd really appreciate it. And with that out of the way, let's begin. After weeks upon weeks of refusing the multiple requests to immediately resign from his role as co-conservator, Jamie Spears is finally filing a petition to end the conservatorship. Britney's lawyer, Matthew Rosengard, said, in a statement to Variety correspondent Elizabeth Wagmeister. This filing represents another legal victory for Britney Spears, a massive one, as well as vindication for Ms. Spears. He continues by saying, It appears that Mr. Spears believes he can try to avoid accountability and justice, including sitting for a sworn deposition and answering other discovery under oath. But as we assess his filing, which was inappropriately sent to the media before it was served on counsel, we will also continue to explore all options. So not only was it inappropriately sent to the media, but Rosengard also believes that this is Jamie's way of avoiding any accountability for his actions. If you recall back in July during the hearing where the judge allowed for Britney to select her own lawyer, she reiterated that she believes her father should be charged in this case. As soon as Rosengart was selected by Ms. Spears, he immediately started to make formal requests for Jamie's immediate removal. However, in addition to that, we still had Jody Montgomery remaining in place as co-conservator. Previously, when announcing that he would be stepping down, Jamie's lawyer said, Mr. Spears continues to serve dutifully and he should not be suspended or removed, and certainly not based on false allegations. Mr. Spears is willing to step down when the time is right, but the transition needs to be ordered and include a resolution of matters pending before the court. Judge Brenda Penny, who has been overseeing this case, will still need to approve the move, but it certainly seems like the grounds for a conservatorship may no longer exist if Jamie himself is filing to end it. This did not come without a fight, though. As you know, if you've been following this case with us, Jamie not only asked for $2 million in payouts towards the end of it, but he has also been receiving $16,000 a month just to manage his daughter's affairs while she was touring. According to NBC, the filing by Jamie also defended his work as Britney's conservator and said, The conservatorship has helped Miss Spears get through a major life crisis, rehabilitate and advance her career, and put her finances and her affairs in order. But recently, things have changed. He also stated that his legal team do not believe Britney will require any further psychological assessment, which will be a huge relief to her after she publicly objected to another evaluation in that first testimony. Jamie also acknowledged that because Britney was granted by the court to choose her own lawyer, this should mean that she has the capacity to handle her own life. Jamie also addressed her complaints of having every aspect of her life dictated to her and said she wants to control the money she has made from her her career and spend it without supervision or oversight. She wants to be able to get married and have a baby if she so chooses. In short, she wants to live her life as she chooses without the constraints of a conservator or court proceeding. Jamie also noted in the filing that his daughter is driving again and wanted more control over her therapist sessions. Now, what also blew me away a bit here was that he called on Jody Montgomery to step down as well. As I mentioned earlier, Jody currently serves as Britney's personal conservator while he managed her finances. However, Rosengard is not going to let him slip by that easily. In his filings last week, Rosengard stated, Mr. Spears has no right to condition his departure on improper and extortionate demands for payment or blanket immunity. Instead, the only honorable, decent, and humane course of action is for Mr. Spears to resign now, provide all necessary information to evaluate his accounting, and if matters cannot be resolved consensually, to try to defend his accounting. That term blanket immunity is really going to be the next point of contention for this case. And it echoes Rosengard's newest assertions that Jamie is trying to end this thing quickly so that he can avoid any charges. The next hearing for this case is currently scheduled for September 29th, and at this hearing, the judge will be expected to make a ruling on Jamie's removal, but it is still unclear if this new petition to end the conservatorship will be discussed at that time. After I've lied and told the whole world I'm okay and I'm happy, it's a lie. I thought I just maybe I said that enough. Maybe I might become happy because I've been in denial. I've been in shock. I am traumatized. Late last night, the audio recording from the latest conservatorship hearing for Britney Spears was released and quite honestly, she has never sounded more like herself. During the hearing, Britney detailed and exposed everyone who took part in this unnecessary control over her and she made some very good points as to why it should end with no further evaluations. I'm going to get into all the details in just a moment, but first, if you could do us a big favor and please tap that like button, we'd really appreciate it. And with that out of the way, let's begin. I just want my life back and it's been 13 years and it's enough. It's been a long time since I've owned my money, and it's my wish and my dream for all of this to end without being tested. Yesterday, Britney Spears appeared in court remotely to speak out against her conservatorship that has truly taken over her life and estate. In this hearing, Britney had time to cover a lot of things, from her therapy sessions to her strained relationship with her father, and it all felt so surreal to finally hear Britney speak openly about what's truly been going on. While on the call, Spears pleaded with LA judge Brenda Penny to help her end this conservatorship that was originally granted in 2008 and over the years has continued to be extended. If you'd like to read the entire transcript, we will actually be sure to put that down in the 
description below. But for today, let's cover some of the key highlights from the hearings to bring you up to speed. The first big thing that really hit home for me at least was Brittany comparing her situation to being sex trafficked. Her family had created a custom rehab program for her at a small home in Beverly Hills. According to Spears, all of her possessions including her credit card, phone, and passport were all taken away. What's worse is that while at this rehab program, they took the door off of her room. During her stay, she said that staff and nurses would constantly watch her even while she was changing. She goes on to say, I packed my bags and went to that place. I worked seven days a week, no days off, which in California, the only similar thing to this is called sex trafficking, making anyone work against their will. Another mind-blowing moment was when Brittany accused her father of actually enjoying having this control over her. She said that he listened to her cry on the phone for an hour and loved every moment, adding, the control he had over someone as powerful as me, he loved the control to hurt his own daughter 100,000%. After refusing to do a string of shows in Las Vegas, her family began calling Britney's therapist and telling lies about how she wasn't taking her medication and that she was refusing to cooperate in rehearsals. Three days after saying no to more Vegas shows, her therapist sat her down in a room and said that he had a million phone calls about her behavior. He then immediately put her on lithium out of nowhere. She describes the effects and lack of control saying, He put me on that and I felt drunk. I couldn't even have a conversation with my mom or dad really about anything. Not to mention her family had also set her up to be exposed to the paparazzi even when they were sending her to get help. She had requested that a therapist come to her home because it would be more private, but they insisted on sending her to a place in Westlake where the paparazzi could just sit outside and snap photos of her crying as she left. She then proceeds to tell the judge that she is petitioning for the conservatorship to end without any evaluation. In the call, she is quoted as saying, They only gave me two options for therapists, and I'm not sure how you make your decisions, ma'am, but this is the only chance for me to talk to you for a while. I need your help, so if you can just kind of let me know where your head is. I don't really honestly know what to say, but my requests are just to end the conservatorship without being evaluated. I want to petition basically to end the conservatorship, but I don't want to be evaluated and be sat in a room with people four hours a day like they did me before. And they made it even worse for me after that happened. In addition to ending the conservatorship, Brittany also mentioned that she was most likely going to be suing her family as well. She said that they had benefited from her silence and lived off of her conservatorship for far too long. Her family would be allowed to do these interviews where they could talk so openly about her situation, but when Brittany wanted to speak up, she was told by her own people that she couldn't. You really heard this need for her to speak up in her voice as well and especially when she told the judge that she didn't want this call to end because she knows the moment that it's over it's back to being told no all of the time. Brittany also really exposed how terribly set up the conservatorships are and this statement may actually lead to the law changing. In her hearing Brittany spoke further about how corrupt the conservatorships can become. She's quoted as saying, The conservatorship from the beginning, once you see someone, whoever it is, in the conservatorship making money, making them money, and myself money, and working, that whole statement right there, the conservatorship should end. I shouldn't be in a conservatorship if I can work and provide money and work for myself and pay other people. It makes no sense. The laws need to change. What state allows people to own another person's money and account and threaten them and saying, you can't spend your money unless you do what we want you to do, and I'm paying them? Which is so true, and the real reason Brittany didn't speak up about this before is because she thought that no one would believe her. She said that people would make fun of her or laugh and say she's lying, she's got everything, she's Britney Spears, which is also also the perfect cover for the people who want to control Britney Spears. She adds, I've been so angry and I cry every day. It concerns me. I'm told I'm not allowed to expose the people who did this to me. In her final closing statements, Brittany mainly spoke about wanting to move forward and actually be able to get married and have a baby. Because believe it or not, but that was controlled as well. She actually described having an IUD birth control device in her body that her management refused to let her remove. Even though she insisted that she wanted to try and have another baby. In closing, she said to the court, I deserve to have a life. I've worked my whole life. I deserve to have a two to three year break and just, you know, do what I want. Want to do. According to Insider.com, a judge is going to let Britney speak directly to the courtroom about her conservatorship. Britney has been under this conservatorship since 2008 and would rarely take part in any of the court hearings, which definitely makes this a monumental moment for the star. Previously, she had not even commented publicly on the legal arrangement where a court-appointed advisor would control her personal and financial affairs, which also included her medical treatment, security, and overall career. Following a breakdown that she had, her father Jamie was appointed as her guardian because Britney had to be taken to the hospital after that incident. Brittany's lawyer Samuel Ingham told the courts on Tuesday, My client has requested a hearing at which she can address the court directly. My client has asked that it be done on an expedited basis. In addition to her father being in charge of her estate, some of her personal assets were also under the control of attorney Andrew Wallet. However, in 2019, Andrew resigned as a co-conservator, putting Jamie in charge of everything. Fast forward to August of 2020, and Brittany's lawyer had filed to have Jamie Spears removed as a conservator of her $59 million estate. After that didn't go through, in November of 2020, the judge then appointed Bessemer Trust to serve as a co-conservator with 
with Jamie Spears. Which to me sounds like even the judge doesn't really think that Jamie should be in total control of Britney's estate. Now just last month, Britney's lawyer did try to argue that her father should be permanently replaced with Jody Montgomery as the new co-conservator. But all of this conservatorship talk truly has fans exhausted and beginning to believe that Britney is being controlled and manipulated in some way. Which is why we saw the rise of this Free Britney movement that some would argue it actually led to the New York Times documentary titled Framing Britney Spears. Had it not been for her own fans caring about her well-being, who knows if the New York Times would have even covered this in such a way. Now oddly enough, Jamie's attorney Vivian Thoreen told CNN that Jamie also wants this conservatorship to end. In her statement, Vivian said, Jamie would love nothing more than to see Britney not need a conservatorship. Whether or not there is an end to the conservatorship really depends on Britney. If she wants to end her conservatorship, she can file a petition to end it. Which is complete and total gaslighting. You can't deny her every time she has filed for this to end and then be like, oh, if she wants it to end, then all she has to do is file to end it. That'd be like if the Oscars suddenly told the viewers that they got to vote on who the winner was and then they were like, wow, we're just gonna pick who we want regardless. We are hoping that this in-person court date that has been set for June 23rd really gives the judge a chance to see Britney in front of him instead of, let's just say, judging off of progress reports from her father or other co-conservators. Britney has not performed publicly since October of 2018, but she still frequently posts photos and videos of herself at her home in LA. In 2019, she had to pull out of a Las Vegas concert residency to briefly enter a mental health facility. So for her to now be making a public appearance means she must be doing much better now. A supporter of Britney Spears who was outside of the courthouse on Tuesday begging for her to be set free told reporters, this is the first time in 13 years we're getting any sort of word from Britney about her conservatorship and it's the biggest deal to me. My life is free Britney and it just changed. So far these are all of the details that we have but we will definitely keep you informed once that court date on June 23rd rolls around. 1.53 a.m. Hi, this is Britney Spears. It's 7 to 8 to um, I was just saying I want to ask this conservatorship. I've been brought up by visitation of my baby. That is conservatorship. I'm confined, restrained, and stripped of my civil rights. And I demand the state of California to review this case because I feel it's illegal. Britney's controversial former manager has just released an old voicemail message from the star proving that she has been fighting to end this conservatorship for more than a decade. I'm going to get into all those details in just a moment, but first if you could do us a big favor and please tap that like button, we'd really appreciate it. And with that out of the way, let's begin. Now before I get into all the details of this story, I just want to read out exactly what Britney said on that voicemail because the audio is a little bad and if you're hard of hearing like myself, then I'm sure you were a bit confused. On the voicemail, Britney said, Hi, this is Britney Spears. It's Sunday the 18th. Just so you know, I want out of this conservatorship. I've been blackmailed by visitation with my babies by the conservatorship. I'm confined, restrained, and stripped of my civil rights, and I demand the state of California to review this case because I feel it's illegal. Bye. Many people on Twitter, though, began criticizing Sam Lupfi for holding on to these audio files until now. However, according to an interview that he did with Page Six, Sam claims to have actually leaked these voicemails in the past, but because everyone is hyper aware of Britney's situation now, his recent post has gained a lot of traction. Lupfi, who claimed to have managed Spears from 2007 to 2007, 2008, was previously blamed by Britney's family for her 2007 breakdown. The first clip that we played for you is just one of three that Sam has posted in hopes of exposing all of the lies that the family is trying to tell right now. In the second clip, which featured an old photo of Britney with both of her kids, she says, Hi, my name is Britney Spears. I called you earlier. I'm calling again because I just wanted to make sure that during the process of eliminating my conservatorship that my father has threatened me several times, that you know he'll take my children away. I just want to be guaranteed that everything will be fine with the process and that you guys are taking care of of everything, that things will stay the same as far as my custodial time, that's it, bye. Sam then adds a comment to this one that says, months later, still nothing. Then in the third clip that Sam Lefty says was likely recorded in 2009 as well, Britney can be heard clearly requesting to be represented by new counsel. She says in the recording, Hi, this is Britney Spears. I want John Erdley and John Patterson to represent me as a court appointed attorney in my best interest and best wishes. Okay, bye. Sam then goes on to add a year later, 2009, maybe still nothing. Ingham claimed all these were fake and her folks verified that they were not her. All left on my phone every year. What a world we live in. Those babies can drive now and still nothing has changed. Although it wasn't until recently that Britney finally was able to obtain a new attorney. And Matthew Rosengard has been able to do so much in just a short amount of time, which really makes you think about what her life could have been had the people she was calling for help just listened to her. All this last clip does is show how long she has been fighting to remove her court appointed attorney Samuel Ingham. Back in May of 2008, a California court had denied John Erdley's bid to challenge Jamie as the conservator of Britney's estate, despite her pleading with them to let him be in charge. It's also important to note here though that Britney was granted a restraining order against Sam Lepfe in February of 2008, apparently on the same day that her conservatorship began. Which 
I don't know about you, but that seems a little sus, because if her father was in charge of her affairs at the time, of course he didn't want Sam nosing around and leaking voicemails like we just heard. The worst part is that during this time, the media was branding Britney as being crazy, yet in the clip she is clearly of sound mind and body, pleading that she wanted Early to represent her. Sam goes on to say in another caption, This was one of the first ones. The transcript is in the post. Every attorney received a copy. The beginning of the messages were all time and phone number stamped. They all knew these were real and legit every judge threw these out. Wouldn't even call her into chambers to ask if these were real or not. Zilch, zero, nothing. There was never anyone on the inside that would help. These calls are to my phone. These calls cost me a ton of money in court, tarnished my name further, but also tore my soul apart. I had no idea where to turn. No one was listening. No one seemed to care. I can't believe nothing has changed. She will never get those years back. Her children were robbed of a huge chunk of history with their mother. You, Hill Street. Thankfully, since June, Britney has been able to publicly voice the exact same concerns that she had way back then, even getting the chance to detail the pain and torture that she was put through over the following 13 years in this conservatorship. In two separate hearings, Britney slammed her conservators for mistreating her as she requested yet again for this all to end at once. Her new attorney, Matthew Rosengard, said that he will be fighting to fulfill his client's wishes at the next court date set for September 29th. In addition to that, Sam Luffy has said that he has notified Matthew that he is available for whatever he may need, although that may be a tad bit difficult considering the fact that in June of 2019, Luffy was slapped with another restraining order that prevents him from having any contact with Britney or her family for five years. Jamie Spears has finally agreed to step down and relinquish the control that he had over his daughter for the last 13 years. This is a major milestone for the Free Britney movement, and I'm going to tell you all about it right here on I.O. But first, if you could do us a big favor and please tap that like button, we'd really appreciate it. And with that out of the way, let's begin. TMZ has just reported that Jamie's lawyer has filed legal documents in which he says, there are in fact no actual grounds for suspending or removing Mr. Spears as the conservator of the estate, and it is highly debatable whether a change in conservator at this time would be in Ms. Spears' best interests. However, he then changes his tone and even points blame at the Free Britney campaign by saying, Nevertheless, even as Mr. Spears is the unremitting target of unjustified attacks, he does not believe that a public battle with his daughter over his continuing service as her conservator would be in her best interests. So, even though he must contest this unjustified petition for his removal, Mr. Spears intends to work with the court and his daughter's new attorney to prepare for an orderly transition to a new conservator. And the document continues by saying that regardless of his former title, Jamie will always be her father and will always love her unconditionally and will always look out for her best interests. He then, however, decides to take a moment to attack Lynn Spears as well. You know, the mother of this daughter that he loves so very much. He said her credibility is undermined because Brittany had refused to see Lynn when she was at the mental health facility in 2019. He did, however, confirm that Lynn has had little involvement in the conservatorship, but then, you know, he also tacked on little involvement in Britney's life for the last 13 years as well. He's weirdly acting like some sort of savior, too, for Britney, even as he departs this conservatorship. He says again in these documents that he saved Britney when she was in crisis, desperately in need of help 13 years ago, adding not only was she suffering mentally and emotionally, she was also being manipulated by predators and in financial distress. Mr. Spears came to his daughter's rescue to protect her. And Britney's lawyer, Matthew Rosengard, did respond to the news as well and said that they are pleased but not really surprised by it. Also adding that they were disappointed in the ongoing shameful and reprehensible attacks on Miss Spears and others. He goes on to say, We look forward to continuing our vigorous investigation into the conduct of Mr. Spears and others over the past 13 years while he reaped millions of dollars from his daughter's estate and I look forward to taking Mr. Spears' sworn deposition in the near future. In the interim, rather than making false accusations and taking cheap shots at his own daughter, Mr. Spears should step aside immediately. Britney Spears lawyer Matthew Rosengard is now claiming that her father Jamie wanted a $2 million payout in exchange for his removal from the conservatorship. Thankfully, Britney's lawyer is done seeing her have her finances drained and now he's firing back. I'm going to tell you all about it right here on IO, but first, if you could do us a big favor and please tap that like button, we'd really appreciate it. And with that out of the way, let's begin. Jamie Spears is now doing everything he can to get more money out of his daughter before finally departing from his control over her life. Rosengard has now filed a supplemental petition to have Jamie immediately removed moved, but said that he tried to barter his exit by asking for $2 million in payments. Not that long ago, Jamie announced in a court filing that he intended on preparing for an orderly transition for a new conservator, thus stepping down from his highly publicized role as co-conservator. In response to this new payout request, Matthew Rosengart filed a statement with the Los Angeles Superior Court and said, Regardless of the past, Mr. Spears and his counsel are now on notice. The status quo is no longer tolerable, and Britney Spears will not be extorted. In addition to that, he took more shots at Jamie and said, Mr. Spears is blatant attempt to barter suspension and removal 
approval in exchange for approximately $2 million in payments. On top of the millions already reaped from Ms. Spears' estate by Mr. Spears and his associates is a non-starter. He then goes on to say that the only honorable, decent, and humane course of action would be for Mr. Spears to resign now and provide all the necessary information to evaluate his accounting and if matters cannot be resolved consensually, to try to defend his accounting as well. Despite being under direct pressure from his superstar daughter as well as the public at large, Jamie's notice of beginning the transition process was filed with resentment. With the next hearing being held on September 29th, Jamie Spears knows that this transition process is going to take months to complete, which means he still has some control over his daughter's life in that time, and this is where things get a little bit sketchy. Now that being said, Rosengart put into the recent court filings that, contrary to the powers that Mr. Spears and his counsel seek to arrogate unto themselves, they do not get to choose the time and place of Mr. Spears' departure. Those issues are governed by law, the best interest of Ms. Spears, and by this court. Rosengart even compared this to a hostage situation, saying that this is not about him, it is about the best interest of his daughter, which as a matter of law mandates his removal. Putting aside the legal issues that require his immediate removal, if he truly loved his daughter, he would resign today because it would be the correct and at least decent thing to do. But let's not get it twisted. Just because Jamie was denied a $2 million payout doesn't mean that he's going to be giving up control. Judge Penny has rejected any attempt to legally remove him from the conservatorship, and while Jamie is still in control of his daughter's financial and career decisions, Jody Montgomery remains in charge of her personal and medical affairs. So all that talk about him stepping down was simply lip service to the Free Britney crowd online, hoping that this would calm them down, but we all see right through what's happening here and it's not okay. In recent weeks, Rosengart suggested that forensic CPA Jason Rubin replace Jamie in the conservatorship, but that still means that all these people believe Britney needs to be controlled by someone. It's fine for her to have an accountant or you know someone to manage her career, but under the guise of a conservatorship, these people have far too much control over her life and her decisions. Thank <laughs> you.